immunization, vaccine, basically the same thing. Most of the work is being done by our own body. We are exposed to something foreign. Our cells eat it. They display the marker. And then our T cells go to work and we start feeling better. Yeah. I like to draw, it helps me to learn. So here's that invader. It has a surface protein and it's different than ours. You see, we have self markers so that we know when we're invaded. In this case, we're invaded and our cells display the marker of the invader. They carry it to the na naive T which is going to divide into memories, helper T's, cytotoxic, B's, and all these cells are going to work together and in six or seven days we start feeling better. At least that's the way it usually works. There is passive immunity and that's when we're giving, uh, being given antibodies from another source, usually synthetic nowadays, and it's only temporary. Good example is in uh, a fetus, they get antibodies from the mother when these proteins cross the placenta. And that's before birth. But even after birth, colostrum in breast milk contains antibodies. Now, this can be synthesized, so if a woman can't breastfeed, their um, baby can still benefit. Another type of passive involves the exposure um, of antibodies f for um, a temporary, really. It's all, that's the main word here, temporary. Because let's say you have a patient who's really sick. They need a little boost in their immune system. So you inject some artificial antibodies. Or travelers. I did this when I worked in Africa. There was terrible infections over there, so I needed a boost. And healthcare workers, such as COVID workers, they often get a boost, uh, gamma globulin or something like that. Long ago, like 1950s, the way vaccines were done was the anti, uh, antigen surface marker was injected. And I don't like this because it puts us at risk. And that's what most people think. They go, well, I don't want to get sick. I don't want to get a, a vaccine. But what they don't understand is the modern vaccines are um, really effective. So what we're trying to do is we're exposing the body to an antigen so that our body fights. So again, our body is doing all the work. The vaccine is just introducing the surface marker so we make a memory cell. The more modern version of vaccine is called recombinant, and, and this is what I like. Now, I stand in line for these because these are safe. Okay, We're not talking about 1950s polio vaccines. We're talking about modern vaccines where the, here's say the virus. We take out a little piece of that antigen DNA. We're going to insert it in something harmless like yeast. And so now we have a vehicle. And look, at, I'll show you what's going to happen next is we have the, we've tricked the yeast into making the marker of the virus. And so when this is injected, there's no way you can get sick. Now people will sometimes say, oh, I'm not getting a flu shot because I'm afraid I'll get sick. But they were, if they got sick, it's because they were getting sick already. Because when you get a vaccine, you have a day or two where that vaccine is going to depress your immune system, right? That's the price you pay. You have a couple of days of depression, but then you got memory cells. It's worth it. So if they got sick, it's because they were getting sick anyway. And the vaccine just pushed them over the edge. Okay, harmless. So if you remember, here's the uh, protein marker. We're going to trick our macrophage into thinking this yeast is dangerous. It's going to take the surface marker off the yeast. So we're not going to get sick, but we might get a fever. We might feel like we're getting sick, but then our APCs are going to do their job, and then the memory T cells. And we've got this big battle going on, even though the yeast is harmless, but we're going to make some memory cells. Here they are at the bottom. 
And those memory cells are going to protect us when we're exposed to the real thing. Monoclonal antibodies. Think of antibodies. Those are made by B cells. Okay, this is kind of a cool diagram. B cell releases these antibodies, and we can use them for all sorts of purposes. They're, they're very similar to what you make in your own body. But we make them in labs. They can be used in what's called immunotherapy. So the B cells in your body make these, but our laboratory ones can be used for detecting uh, pregnancy or cancer, treatment of diseases, all kinds of uses. I like this one, immunotherapy, because my dad had um, melanoma cancer, and he was given a special kind of tumor receptor binding uh, antibody, and it cured him because the, the antibody bound to the receptor surf, surface receptors on the uh, uh, cancer. It's incredible. It saved his it saved his life. Another one is using them for uh, uh, treatments of HIV and uh, COVID as well, because we're going to combine the antibody with a toxin. Some viruses, such as HIV, can go so deep in our cells that um, it's hard to treat them. They're in our DNA. But you don't hear about HIV deaths like we did in the 1980s when it first swept through the West Coast because the uh, immunotherapy is becoming so effective. Interferon is a third example. This is used in COVID and also in HIV. What it does is it slows down the virus. Now you might think, well, I want these guys dead. I don't care if you slow down their replication. But yeah, you do care. Because your defenses are so good that if you can slow these guys down a little bit, then your APCs and your helper Ts, they're going to kill them. It's using hepatitis, COVID, HIV, lots of others. A little summary here. Here's a basic foundation, though. Antigen protein surface markers. With immunizations, we're going to trick our body into making memory cells. Okay, So we kind of go from this corner down to here, a memory cell. And the way we get there is the old style, inject the surface marker itself. Kind of dangerous. And this is what people are, they're still afraid of this. They think that's what's going on today. But I mean, it's used only in extreme examples. Most of our modern vaccines are recombinant. And that's where we trick something like yeast into displaying kind of a fake surface marker in a sense. And then our body is going to take that and run it through and end result memory cells so when we ex get exposed to the real thing we are ready man we're going to kill them fast uh, monoclonal antibodies c commercially made in labs for you know breast cancer uh, treatment HIV COVID and some of them just slow down replication enough for us to catch up it's a it's new exciting field monoclonal antibodies